This is my third time joining Ludum Dare. I have 72 hours to make a game from scratch based on a community voted theme. Let me tell you how it went down. This isn't any old Ludum Dare. This is LD50, the big 5-0. So despite being on the tail end of a creative project bender, I decided to join. Tired, hungry, and with a great deal of my previous projects still unfinished, I took a look at the site to see what the theme was. Dare 50. Okay, so... <sighs> this was the first sign of trouble. The last jam I joined had the theme of spring, and in my personal opinion, broad themes like that are awesome. They give you a general thematic direction and immediately guide you to a vast consignment of inspiration, all while not forcing your game into any specific genre or scope. Other themes I like tend to revolve around overcoming design challenges, such as two buttons, one button, no player, only text, where the provided limits set a hurdle to be overcome through creative problem solving and experimentation. But a lot of game jams like to do this fun little thing where, instead of giving you an actual theme, they instead opt to make some kind of vague statement and tell you to run with it. Delay the inevitable. Get off the subject of death. Sure, a theme can be extrapolated from this sentence, such as, the player must delay the inevitable, but in and of itself, it's just an ominous command. Even once deciphered, it's not exactly the most unique or inspiring prompt. When you hear the words, delay the inevitable, I'm fairly certain we all essentially think of the same thing. Impending doom. A meteor is falling, the lava is rising, zombies are approaching, the circle is closing in! When you really boil it down, any game that gets harder over time, ends when you inevitably lose, and gives you a score, is one where the goal is to delay the inevitable. I'm pretty sure that's called an arcade game. But the theme doesn't simply say, make an arcade game. It tries to be all dramatic and grandiose, which adds this completely unnecessary level of expectation to the whole thing. Now, making a game in the arcade style seems too simple. It doesn't evoke that kind of intensity that the theme is so clearly begging for. But on the other hand, if you start thinking of big and crazy ideas, you create an unreasonable goal for yourself for a weekend game jam. Either your game feels underwhelming, or it's incomplete. Either way, you end up disappointed, a feeling you should not have after making a game in one weekend. But never mind my whining. I joined the jam, I committed myself to the work, so I ignored the pretentiousness of the theme and simply decided to make an arcade game. Pinball, specifically. I wanted to make a small game that I would have plenty of time to complete and wouldn't give my tired brain an aneurysm. So pinball it was. I made a little prototype in Godot with some paddles that flip up and down and a ball jittering down the board. I decided to put off physics for later. Two days later. See, I had been working on another little project the week before, and its deadline was the day before the jam's deadline. I thought I would get the project done well ahead of time, and that there wouldn't be any overlap. But a few hours worth of missing animation files certainly changed my mind. So let's jump past all the stomping and yelling to the 4th of April at 6am, where I had 12 hours left to submit for the jam. I hadn't done diddly squat since the first day. Besides complaining about the theme, of course. But by this point, I was far too tired to even be stressed out. So, instead I just made a to-do list and began researching some pinball machines for reference. I'd like to see it from... Yeah. Let's see, Slash. Yeah, they have like railings and stuff, don't they? Shack. Man, these things are cool. Cool as they may be, I was constantly reminded of just how complex these things are. There is no wasted space. They are packed with bumpers, rails, lights, and flashy art. The more I studied these behemoths, the less capable I felt. However, when I'm tired, I have a hard time focusing on multiple things at once. So, instead of worrying about my game not being good enough, I worked on my game. I solved the jittery physics by making everything ten times larger than they should be, and I solved the slow-mo look caused by the gargantuan objects by doubling the timescale. This is actually a little trick I learned from years of simulating things in Blender, where the small size values of real-life objects are just too precise for the computer to handle. Then I began creating a realistic, cohesive art style for my game. I imported the textures from Textures.com and Polyhaven, I made the lighting nice with an HDRI, and I made a bunch of fancy 3D models for the game. And no, the gears do not have too many polygons, that is a perfectly reasonable amount, thank you very much. I figured if the game wasn't going to be very good, the least I could do was make it look good, which is surprisingly easy in Godot, with some caveats, of course. As per usual, the coding was what took the longest. Now, I love Godot. I love it, it's great. 
but there is almost no support for it online, especially if you are doing 3D. It's very capable of 3D though, that's the weird thing. I have never once felt limited by Godot's 3D. Despite what people online say, it works well, it does its job, and it doesn't try to bite. But very few people use Godot for 3D, so the documentation is lacking. And the form support is not there either. Imagine that. Godot, change rigid body 3D position. 2D, 2D, generic, 2D, unity. So often, if you want to figure out how to do something in Godot, you must try every available method and variable or hack together a solution yourself. This can make it a little awkward, though, when you jump the gun and spend several hours on a wonky way to make 3D objects bounce off each other, just for it to be one of the few things that Google actually can answer. And in a matter of seconds, no less. Is Vector 3 dot reflect a thing? What is bounce versus... Hold on, I need to know this. So bounce is probably what I want. Vector3.bounce. That's one of the things with Godot. People say they like it because you can prototype things way faster than in Unity. However, if you don't already know how to do something, I can pretty much guarantee it will take far longer. And not because something actually takes a long time to do. Godot has a lot of the same essential guts that Unity has. But there's a lot you just won't find on Google. In spite of this, progress was moving at a reasonable pace. The last three hours were spent trying to make the game presentable. I used the cool gears to make a layout for the board, added in some text and gameplay variables, and brought it all together with a nice face for the clock. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't even... <laughs> Pretty soon it was looking like an underwhelming game of pinball with a clock theme. Yeah, I didn't have time to fully realize this thing. So despite taking place inside of a clock, it is one of the least complex pinball machines out there. But I added sounds and made the gears change size when they were bounced off, which made the game feel a lot juicier. Though I had close to 40 minutes left to submit, I was rather bored of working on the project. So I called it quits and decided it was good enough as is. I exported my game, I made an itch page, and uploaded the HTML5 build, but when I went to test my game, this happened. I'm going all in on this one, I trust it'll work just fine. Oh yeah. No, yeah, this went... You know, this was kind of... This was what I was hoping for. You know? One more time? I'm just seeing if maybe, you know, it was Chrome or something. Instead of, you know, immediately going and blaming myself. Okay, you know, I guess... Okay. Yes! I love debugging builds, said some psychopath somewhere. Again, Google was no help here, but I figured it was some kind of graphical setting messing with WebGL, so I tried various changes. I tried changing the resolution, but it didn't work. I tried changing the color space from filmic to linear, but that didn't work. Finally, I turned off screen space reflections, and it all started working just fine. Screen space reflections is supposed to add nice looking reflection effects into the game, but in truth it looks kind of glitchy even at the best of times, so it wasn't such a stretch that putting the game on a browser would only worsen its condition. I uploaded the final file, filled out the details on the Ludumdare site, and submitted my game three minutes before the deadline. Man, I'm good at cutting it close. After everything was said and done, I was left feeling rather numb. You ever get so drained from working on something that you completely lose your ability to emotionally analyze it? I wasn't proud of my project, but I wasn't disappointed. I wasn't relieved that the jam was over, but I wasn't worried to begin with. By the end of the jam, I was just an apathetic robot, typing letters and moving the mouse to make processes occur. Once the jam finished, I took a break to revitalize. A few hours later, my senses had somewhat returned, so I played my game to make a final verdict. As is usual with Godot, the game lags when it first loads in all of the shaders. Otherwise, the sound of the ball is kind of weird, the bumper behavior is often unpredictable, and it is rather empty for a pinball machine. But I was really happy with the game. I enjoyed playing it, I enjoyed looking at it. It was like a cat toy. There's not a lot going on, but the ball is moving fast and making noise, and I must catch it. I genuinely wanted to play it multiple times. And you might too. So if you want to play it, the link is in the description. Also, play some of the other Ludum Dare entries. I know for a fact that there are a lot of games in this jam that are far better better than mine. So go support the devs. And if you participated in this jam or any other, always remember to be proud of your work. These things aren't an easy feat. Now if you don't mind, I'm going to take a little break from game jams to try and convalesce and allow my sense of being to return. Maybe you should too. Ciao for now.